Shalom, everybody. God bless you. Hope you're doing well. Gilad Rossinger here. Good to see you. I just wanted to log on and give you guys a powerful word, a revelation that the Lord has been really speaking to me about uh, in a very serious, powerful, loving way. He's such a good God, but this dropped on me a few weeks ago. I guess it was about two weeks ago when we were in a time of prayer, and I believe it's going to bless you. I believe it is going to literally bring you so much favor. And so I want you to share this. I want you to really hear me, hear what I'm saying to you, because the way that this came about was just absolutely incredible. Um, things like this don't happen every day. And so I think that you are going to be really blessed because this is the truth. This is a powerful, shocking, forgotten revelation that we need to be reminded of. Praise the Lord. Good to see you guys. Let me know where you're watching from as you log on. Go ahead and share this. Let me see where you're watching from. Good to see you. Hey, how's it going? God bless you. Whether you're watching this live or on the replay, I just want to greet you guys. Amen. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Hey, what's up? What is up? Shalom, Canada in the house. Amen. What's up, guys? How's it going? Canada in the house. All right. Good to see you guys. All right. What's up, Nicole? Hey, you were on the phone when this happened. Praise the Lord. Come on. Amen. Go ahead and share this, guys. Good to see you. Andrea Thompson, Shalom. Texas in the house. Tennessee in the house. Hey, Andrea. Good to see you guys. Manila, Philippines, Texas. Hallelujah. Trish, Shabbat Shalom. God bless you. Emily, blessings to you. Hallelujah. Listen, guys. Denise, man, we got some powerful warriors on here. Leah, Shalom. God bless you guys. Amen. Go ahead and share this, guys. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Amen. Good to see you guys. Yeah, you're going to want to hear this. This is this was so powerful. I'm just going to wait like literally a few more seconds for some people to log on. And then I'm going to share what this shocking, amazing revelation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. All right. All right, so listen to what happened. This is so amazing. Uh, we were on a prayer call like two weeks ago and uh, we we're just praying and the power of the Holy Spirit was there. And uh, my mom and dad were on the phone. Nicole was on the prayer call and uh, we were praying and the spirit was moving really, really powerfully. And uh, there was this moment where we were just burdened with the heart of God for purity and holiness. We were burdened with the heart of God for purity and holiness. And uh, as we were praying, uh, you know, when the spirit shows up, you know what I'm talking about. When the spirit comes, oftentimes that you're just, you're just praying the heart of God. You know, you don't come with an intention. You don't come with an agenda. You're not trying to get something. You know, you just allow the spirit to move. And that's really what we need in this hour. The Holy Spirit has been shut out of the churches for the most part. He's been shut out of the meetings. You know, we've been arrogant and ignorant and prideful as the large ecclesia, I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, the on fire believers and the remnant, but I'm talking about as the whole, you know, we've, we've gotten away from the power of the Holy spirit and we've gotten into these programs. We've gotten into these different things, you know, put together a, a business plan and a program, you know, coffee, donuts and all that. And uh, then, you know, your, your 20 minute worship and then, you know, your little sermon and, and then go home. But, you know, oftentimes the Holy Spirit wants to do something powerful, exceedingly above and beyond all we could hope for or imagine. And, you know, we've been longing for revival. We've been longing, longing. I'm talking about longing for true outpouring of the spirit and and for true revival. And so I'm praying and uh, I just began to cry out. And now this was the, the cry of God. It was it was the father's heart. You know, but but I want that. And so I was just like, Lord, give us clean hands and a pure heart. Give us clean hands and a pure heart. Oh, God, clean hands and a pure heart. We're crying out. Everybody's praying in the spirit. 
And uh, I was like, oh God, clean hands and a pure heart. And, and like, I can't remember how many times I said it, but the last time that I said it, you know, give us clean hands and a pure heart. I looked up, I was sitting in, in my car on this prayer call and I look up and this, this truck drives by my car in the parking lot. Right as I was saying, give us clean hands. The very second I look up and on this truck was a logo and it said both hands, both hands to the orphan and the widow. Whoo! Come on, I bet you weren't expecting that. When I saw that, I was like, God almighty. Oh my goodness. God almighty. Whew. Oh my goodness. The Holy Spirit comes. You know, we're crying out for clean hands and a pure heart. And I look up and there's a logo. It says both hands to the orphan and to the widow. My goodness. Is this amazing? Listen, this was a direct a direct answer from the throne room of God for what he desires. You know, it says in the word that the religion that he likes, that he wants true religion is to care for those in need to the orphan and to the widow and to keep yourself defiled from the things of this world, to keep yourself unstained, not defiled, to keep yourself unstained and not defiled from the things of this world. Okay. And so, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm like, my goodness, you know, we've been on this for a while. You know, our organization has been giving to the orphans and the widows, uh, you know, for, I guess, already a couple years, at least a few years. Uh, we've really made it a priority. Um, but, but this just highlighted a direct answer from the throne room of God. It's like, God, what's on your heart? You know, how can we have clean hands and a pure heart? What do you want? from us in this hour and he's like back to the basics guys love the orphan love the widows bless them take care of them so into them give them financially help them and uh you know it just hit me because oftentimes you know we're looking for you know this special move and outpouring and all these things but i'm telling you this coming end time revival it is going to be sparked and marked by a people who live holy and righteous, who take care of the needy, who help the poor, who, who take care of the orphan and the widow, who keep themselves holy, separated from the world. And that is going to bring a blessing from heaven. Listen, come on, somebody. You want to share this broadcast? I'm telling you, this is a word of the Lord. When you look at the outpouring that happened in the book of Acts, you know, this man named Cornelius he was a righteous centurion. And it says that his lifestyle, his lifestyle, his giving to the needy, to those who were in need, you know, he gave offerings. He took care of the needy. I'm sure the orphans and the widows, you know, he was a righteous man. And, and his offerings, his giving to the needy, to the orphans, to the widows and those in need literally came up as an incense before God in heaven. And angels were sent literally to get the apostle, the man of God, to send him. He had a dream. He sends him to Cornelius' house. And the Holy Spirit, long story short, ends up coming upon the Gentiles because of this righteous man, this one family, this one man. Obviously, there were other reasons and other people and other things involved. But the basic narrative of the story is that your lifestyle, your lifestyle can change what happens on earth. When you live in a holy and righteous way, when you make it a point to give to the poor, to give to the needy, to give to orphans and widows, heaven takes notice and entire movements can begin. Entire outpourings can come. The Holy Spirit can be loosed. Angels can be dispatched because of your faithful obedience. Come on, don't think it a small thing. I'm telling you, do not despise the days of small beginnings. The Lord is looking for a people. He's searching the earth right now. The spirit of God is searching the earth right now. Right now, he's roaming to and fro and he's looking for those people that will be faithful. Those people that will say, yes, here I am, Lord, send me. I wanna take care of the needy. I wanna help the poor. I wanna take care of the orphan and the widow. I wanna be holy and set apart so that you can use me in this end time move of God. I'm telling you, we're already in it. 
we're already in it. Something supernatural already broke forth when we were in Oklahoma at this revival. I'll talk more about it in another video. But I just want you to know that this is the time. Something is shifting in the atmosphere. Things have changed. We're in a new season, a new thing that God is doing in the earth. And he is looking for a people that will get back to the basics, that will give to the poor, give to the needy, you know, preach the true messages of, of the kingdom and, uh, and bless others. Amen. So listen, I just want to encourage you today. This is the Isaiah 58 fast. You can find it all throughout scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, the prophets, um, you know, the Sermon on the Mount, the words of Yeshua himself. You can find it all throughout scripture, but uh, you can see the Isaiah 58 protocol for the breaking out of the righteousness of the Lord and the glory of the Lord and the healing that springs forth. Um, I'm going to do an in-depth teaching about it later, but I just want to hop on and encourage you guys. Listen, it matters what you do with your time, with your resources. Um, let's be a light to the nations. Amen. God bless you. Hope you have a great day and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.